So this is a, quite an esoteric video compared to some of the ones I've done on the moon. And it has to do with how to work the moon, which depends on, again, your sex. So it, there's, it's different if you're female, regardless of gender expression or sexuality or identity, um, and also if you're male. Um, so I'll begin with a female since the female directly accesses the moon. So this is going to be um, slightly Kabbalistic. I want to just talk about what I'm talking about here Kabbalistically. So again, um, the moon itself is a chakra. It's the Muladhara chakra, and it's the astral plane that um, basically determines what's manifesting on Earth. And the ideal is to be using your astral in such a way that you're actually channeling the will of God or um, the true will in Chokmah. So... Um, um, so that's the ideal for everybody. We're here as instruments of the divine, and then we're using our specific instruments, like learning them and then working with them harmoniously to, to channel that universal will. Now, the actual path called the moon, or Koph, Q-O-P-H is how it's usually put in English, actually connects um, Malkuth, which is not the moon, but the physical uh, elemental realm of Earth, with Nitzak, seven, the seventh sphere, so the tenth sphere with the seventh sphere. Um, and Nitzak is um, basically the uh, Manipura chakra, which is to do with assimilating in, um, data or, to, or any type of um, incoming phenomena and, and circulating it in the body and, and manifesting, working with that. Um, and also I should say that Nitzak has to do with love or bhakti. So it's, it's a sphere of working specifically with, sorry, working objectively with your emotions and feelings, um, in love to, as a, so that you can become a motive force of will in the world. Um, so, and hopefully the idea is to return the, that energy back up to the source in Chokmah. So um, it's interesting that the sphere of the moon is actually not connecting Yasad with Nitzak, but Malkuth, the elemental world. And if you look at the tarot card of the moon, which this also is referred to, you'll see that um, it's kind of a dreadful card because it's dealing with pure, um, that basically every, uh, every, it's dealing with um, senses that are not very elevated. So um, just purely physical senses, which means you're cut off from, when you're working that path, you're cut off from the higher um, influences. So it's very tricky. Uh, and I want to talk about first how a female works it and then how a male works it, uh, because it's very instructive in trying to unify those parts of ourselves, which we're all really striving for is to unify the two sides of our own trees. Um, the tree of life that we embody. So we are microcosms of the whole universe and we're here as instruments again of the divine. So um, for a female working the path of the moon, there are three basic modes, which is to say the new moon where the sun um, is not reflected. Her, her spirit is not reflected by her moon. She's closest to earth at those times. Um, the pure sensual, which is also to say it's most easily the pure selfish because there's not the the influence is coming in from spirit. So basically the uh, you know, those rays of the true will, so to speak, come through the sun uh, and then she can receive it through the light of her moon. But if, if it's the new moon, then um, she's closest to earth where that's just not visible. Um, and then there is the um, changing moons, the two changing moons, uh, waxing and waning. So we're between the two phases of new and full. And, and then there's the full moons. So the full moon, she's receiving fully the light of her sun, or we could say her inner male, because we each again, so if I'm outwardly female, I have an inner male uh, who basically is like my image of God. Um, you know, and again, you can, you don't have to, if you're female, you can have a goddess figure that you worship. But the point is, regardless, you have to work with your counter sexual uh, counterpart. Uh, however you do that, whatever mask you choose to put on it to know that they're as a female who's, you know, basically primarily got instinct uppermost and got that physical part of myself that I can work directly. Then I'm working to develop more of my consciousness. Um, 
people can get very angry at this point and, and, and accuse me of being a sexist, but I just want to say, you know, I'm somebody with like a very, very high intellect. I have a PhD in philosophy from a major university. I'm not stupid. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is that regardless of that intellect, um, it's still a part of me that I have to integrate in a harmonious way with my basic form of being uh, female, which um, has me connected to the earth directly. And that's, it, it's nothing to do with how smart I am. Um, it's just something that, that there's a certain dominance of that part of me. And then I'm working to unify with the, the less dominant part of me, which happens to be very smart, you know, that's great and stuff. But regardless, it's still less dominant. And if I want to, and if I want to be harmonious and still preserve my basic form, and I do, because I didn't take a female form accidentally, then I need to um, honor my femininity as well as working with developing and then finally unifying with my inner masculine. So anyway, I work the path of the moon. And um, although I can't say much in a short video, I'll say this. Um, it has to do with sexuality. So as a female, I can easily astral travel. I can easily access, use my sexuality in a projective manner because on the, on the astral plane, the female is dominant. I can um, basically intend through pure intent. I can do it through dreaming. There's all, there's all numbers of techniques and you can go look up um, how to astral travel and such. But the, the woman does it very easily. Um, and, and the idea is to intend to... Um, to channel the true will that would be the ideal way of using this now um, then with sensitivity to your own inner rhythms a lot of times uh, people do magic according to the actual phases of the moon which is fine There's, you know I, I encourage experimentation regardless but um, I personally do it for my own new um, changing and full moons as well and that is to say this um, when I am having my own personal new moon, which is to say, um, usually my menstrual cycle, um, and, and, and that phase of my time when I am actually most withdrawn into my physical being, le least respond, least receiving the light of my own spirit, then I need to be just cautious because there's a more, there's a greater tendency to be more selfish, more, um, less reflective, um, of what is wise to do. So I tend to be, you know, to, sometimes I, I tend to actually withdraw my activities a bit during that time because I just will make more mistakes, um, during that time. Now, as the moon's light is rising in me, so to speak, in those changing times of the moon, then, um, I can, I can sort of start out on new adventures or, or wrap up adventures, um, that I've been taking and so um, I can dream with more confidence during those times. And then during the actual uh, full moon, sort of um, midway between um, new moons, for, again, speaking here of my own personal moon cycle, um, then I am most receptive, oftentimes um, also most um, sexually aroused and such during that time. Um, so I'm, I'm actually able to work with my own inner God, my own male counterpart who is hidden from me. So we all, you know, whatever counter sexual, uh, self that we have is not something you can easily see. If it were, it wouldn't be hidden. It wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be basically reflected all around you in the universe. It would be just, Oh, that's me. So you have to remember that um, when you're talking about working with your inner self, you're talking about working with things that seem outside of you. So every single day we walk through the world, and we're encountering truly God uh, as reflected through our incarnation, but we don't usually recognize it. So that's something to keep in mind is that um, everything that you're encountering, every manifestation of everything, whether it's even your emotions or anything, remember that that's reflecting um, your, the, basically the, the state of union between your uh, outer self and your inner self. So I know that when I'm in my full moon phase, I'm most positively available to um, receive wisdom. So I, when I dream um, with intent and astrally project, that is what I do during that phase. Now, let me talk about the other side of this, which is for the male. Of course, I don't have direct experience of this in this incarnation, but um, nevertheless, um, it's good to be aware of, of, of this. So um, as the male um, typically... The male is more dominant in the Ruach, or again, that the, the mind sphere of the tree of life. 
So on the one hand, um, thought and intellect are more dominant for the male in terms of um, easily accessed in a way that can be unselfish. Um, and on the other hand, um, then the, the tricky part is that his relationship to his body, if he's going to have one, um, can be more problematic because it becomes, because it's detached from him, um, it can be um, something that he falls prey to and, and becomes, you know, foolish with rather than being able to, to work with it in, in for will, I guess, let's put it that way. So then the moon path, that cough path between Malkuth and Yasad, uh, for the male is a way to access his body, Malkuth, that is not necessarily damaging. And so um, essentially you can talk about this in terms of a physical human partner or you can talk about it in terms of your universe. I'll choose to do the second one just for the sake of the video because I think it's less likely to lead to misunderstanding. Um, so for a male, again, walking through his universe, he's going to be encountering phenomena that are really his inner self. I'll say inner goddess. Again, no offense if you actually worship a god uh, primarily. It, it, you put whatever mask you want, but I'm saying inner goddess because everything around you that you seem to see that seems to be outside of you or even your own body um, is reflecting this hidden feminine part of you. And again, on the astral plane, you're non-dominant. So on the physical plane, you're dominant. And on the astral plane, you're non-dominant. And so what that means is that if you want to connect with, um, again, the moon has to do with timing, the rhythms of nature, if you want to be in a harmonious relationship with your universe so that you can bring spirit all the way down, which is what we want to do in Thelema or will, that philosophy of will, then you have to be able, you have to become able to become receptive to your inner uh, woman, inner feminine um, and that has to do with basically understanding and uh, having a relationship of respect with what is coming into your universe, what's showing itself to you in your universe. And since Malkuth has four uh, different elements in it, I recommend that you're respectful and, and um, responsive on all four of those levels. So to do with earth has to do with sexuality. So being respectful with regard to how you use your sexual energy and receive from that in the world. And then, but as well, um, air being intellect, fire being um, spirit of, of doing, and then um, water being emotions that when you, you don't necessarily have to agree with uh, a woman or with, you know, what's coming at you in your world. Um, I'm not saying that. I'm What I am saying though is that you should try to be attentive to and respectful of. Take it in, accept it. You don't have to agree with it. That's very important. So it's not saying like, you know, just, um, you know, lay down and, and just take whatever is dished out to you. I'm not saying that at all. But, um, but, but if you understand that this is your woman, so to speak, it's you, essentially, that, that hidden part of you that you love, that if you can unify your conscious uh, ego self with that hidden part by, by, noticing it on those four levels, then you you too can work the path of the moon because what you'll notice is that there are rhythms in nature um, and that if you are actually respecting them, you know, not being uh, uh, impatient with them, not being angry with them because they're not, you know, giving you what you want when you want it, uh, then you, if you can become a little bit more patient and, and passive, receptive, essentially working your own passivity or receptivity with respect to what's outside of you, then you can modify, you can actually nullify, um, become, you know, centered in, you know, God through that union of outer male and inner female. Um, this is just a taste of how to work. It's not, you know, there's so much more to say and there's a lot of Kabbalistic knowledge that has to go into ma magic, essentially. But uh, I just, you know, just something to think about um, in terms of if you're male and you uh, want to work with the path of the moon to be sensitive to nature's rhythms in all four elements, if you want to really kind of reflect on that, it might be something you need to reflect on serially because, you know, it's hard to be aware of everything at once. Uh, and if you're female, really realizing that you literally are of the earth and you actually can um, project through the astral and to um, do that with intent to fulfill your divine destiny. 
in both cases, it's good to remember, this is something we frequently forget, which is that, you know, we are not our vehicle. So I am not uh, this woman, um, essentially. I mean, I am this at this time. This is how I'm manifesting with intent. This is something I chose. But um, just to remember that this is an instrument. Um, you took this as an instrument to aid in the in the cosmic uh, adventure. And so, you know, don't take it too personally you know, when things aren't pleasant, because they can't always be pleasant. That's just impossible underneath, you know, in the world of duality, if there's joy, there's sorrow and stuff. And just trying to always remember that and trying to, you you know, appreciate the joyful times, but don't get too upset about the sorrowful times. Um, and, you know, always remember to balance. That's what this whole thing is about. It's that there's something manifested, always balance it with the unmanifested opposite of it. And if you do that, and, and then and the path of the moon can be a very useful way to reflect spirit so that the moon is you know lighting up with light of spirit and again that's coming from hokma the true will of the universe which is one for everyone um, then you can live a life that is truly magical